Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Photography Talk with three Black Pratt grads. We are from Brooklyn, New York. Um, born and raised, I'm uh, Greg Claycorn. This is my buddy, Mark Skinner, and my other buddy, Kenny Nelson. And uh, we are all graduates of uh, the Pratt Institute uh, Fine Art Photography Department in Brooklyn, New York. And um, Pratt, a fine institution. <laughs> uh, and we, uh, we finished the uh, photography program and uh, we like to talk about photography. We've been doing it for years and years and years. And we're still shooting for the most part. And um, we get together and we talk about photography. Um, join us, please subscribe or uh, get notifications so that uh, ring that bell so that you can uh, find out when we post another episode. Uh, today's topic is my topic, and I wanted to talk about uh, introspection. You know, we I've been everybody's going through something. If you're in, if you're alive today, you know you're going through something. So I wanted to do something about portraiture. You know, who are you, and more importantly, when. You know, a uh, portrait doesn't necessarily have to be a picture of yourself. It could be a representation of uh, who you are, when you are, what you are, what's going on with you. It could be, you could be a piece of cheesecake if you feel like it being a piece of cheesecake. That's totally up to you. Um, I asked for no more than three images representing uh, you in different visual modes, metaphysical places, uh, you know, whatever, whatever comes to mind. As uh, you know, as visual artists, uh, wanted to explore the self <laughs> without sounding too pompous. Um, any comments, guys? Anything you got? What do you think? No, you're on the money. Uh, it's it's rhetorical. So yeah, self-portrait or introspection. It's interesting. I like this. You like this? Good. Yeah. Good. I'm glad. Go ahead. Can't wait to hear. Uh, I, I I just want to say I think the one with the glasses knows what what they're talking about. That's so I just want to say that. <laughs> the one with the glass. We we all oh the guy oh, one of the guys with the glasses. Man. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Um. Let's see. Um. Uh, I'm doing this by for some reason my my close up okay. vision has been really really wonky. So um. All right. <laughs> start off with uh, that's that's what you look like now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is what that, there it is. This is what I look like now. Um, the kids seem to like it, so uh, I'm gonna go with that. Um, okay, well, first first up, I'm gonna be the first uh, one here. Um, this is this is me, you know, um, kind of a I don't know. Look, you know, my hair has gotten a little. Salt and pepper in it, you know. Um, still dashingly attractive. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so yourself. <laughs> if I say so myself. Dashingly handsome. And, uh, um, you know, it's kind of a throwback to the, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, that disco nightclub feel. And I uh, just kind of like the way uh, it's, it's, it kind of, it's kind of cross- Across time, you know, I, I uh, you know, I've been through the, the nightclub scene. I don't do that much anymore. You don't want to be the, the old guy in the corner at the, at the nightclub. Where the, you know, <laughs> young folks are, you know, doing what they do and they're kind of looking and pointing or ignoring you completely. One or the other. But um, I did like the colors. You know, I still have some, you know, some life and years left in me. And I, I, I enjoy the colors of this. But I, I like that, uh, you know, that, that uh more mature, more, uh, um, I hate that word, but seasoned, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a spring chicken, but I'm not, a, you know, I don't have a foot on a banana peel quite yet either. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, I, those eyes have seen several things. So uh, I just found it interesting that, uh, you know, it's the, a colorful portrait. That's, that's all I have to say about that. Okay, moving right along. What do we got next? The next one up is, you know, I I don't know. I just came across this uh, broken mirror, and uh, it was kind of cinematic for me, you know. And I, I did I shot a little video of it, and I moved my face back and forth, kind of like the uh, the Matrix when uh, Neo was about to take his first 
first uh, plunge into the into the rabbit hole and uh, he's looking at himself through the mirror and the mirror kind of came together and then shoo, there he went and uh, I kind of kind of you know things things have gone wrong in life you know and I've gotten that feeling like wow that could have gone a lot better you know but uh sometimes things break you know and uh, I kind of like the idea that uh, visually you know uh, I'm whole but you know you can be you know whole on the outside and broken up on the inside you know or vice versa you know uh, there's a lot of things going on you could be in uh, any sort of uh, accident or whatever uh, god forbid knock on wood and uh, traveling angels with everybody but uh, you could be broken up on the outside and uh, completely whole and uh, you know more intact on the inside so I wanted to express that in, in this image and uh, I, I enjoyed capturing it, you know, just as a as a as an exercise in visual um, visual representation, you know, it's something something to think about when you uh, when you see, you know, different things, how you can use it as a, a visual uh, communication tool. And uh, that's what I captured. Moving right along. And this one, it's, uh, um, you know, another kind of uh, montage, you know, where, you know, not, 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 not to get, uh, you know, into psychoanalysis or anything, but, um, you know, we're, we're one person, but uh, we wear different masks. There's a whole uh, uh, train of thought that you know we, we we everybody wears masks, and uh, I forget what book it was. What book was that? Um, I think it was a psychologist's uh, interpretation of uh, how we uh, are different people in different situations, and we have to you know take on different hats. Like you know, I'm, I'm a dad now. Now I'm a brother now. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a supervisor, or, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, so um, I kind of like the the idea of, um, you know, um, the multi layeredness of, you know, everyday human existence, you know, every everyday life uh, where we have to, um, you know, be different things, you know, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, I was always going to be a part of me, you know, do or die, Brooklyn deep to the heart, you know, but uh you know, it's kind of like the uh, this one. I, I really felt was um, was a thing of uh, like the uh, the theater masks, uh, 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 comedy and tragedy. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, you know the spring trees in the back. You know, the rebirth, but more so the uh, comedy and tragedy, the lighter side and the darker side of you know a personality, and of a. Uh, you know, all the world's a stage, and we're just actors with our interests and exits. And uh, that's my uh, introspection, you know, just the multi-layered uh, quality of life at 444. It's 444 here on the West Coast. And, um, you know, I, and I uh, just wanted to get that out. I feel, I felt good about, you know, expressing, you know, what's in me, you know, because you're always, as a photographer, you're behind the camera, and you're never really, you know, shooting yourself but there's something about a self-portrait you know even you know because we talked about this in a couple other episodes that whether or not you shoot yourself there's something in you that sees mm -hmm. an image and makes you take the picture so you're kind of in every picture in some way if you you know if you look at it and, and photograph and yourself explore it. yeah basically so I, I wanted to do that and turn the camera the other direction. So that's where I am. That's what I what I did, and now it's on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got a question for you, Greg. I mean, you said you sure. really enjoyed finding the mirror. Now, was that something that uh, you know? How did your introspection uh, come about for the the photograph of the mirror? Was it something that you said, oh, I found a cracked mirror, let me photograph myself, and then you had an introspective moment because you wanted to play with it visually first? Or did you find that um, as soon as you saw the mirror, 
you were inspired to explore some inner thought and then that was the perfect way to execute it? Or did you go out and, and seek a uh, broken mirror or create a broken mirror? mirror for that photo? No, I did not seek a broken mirror. I, I came across it and, um, you know, I'm uh, hey, I'm probably like you know the uh, majority of Americans today. I'm I'm in counseling, you know, because a lot of stuff that I have questions about, and um, you know, sometimes, uh, um, you know, you come across things that speak to you, you know, speak to your situation. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, I just came across, I'm not sure, I, you, that was a complicated question. What was your question again? Did I <laughs> see that or did I? Basically, did you, did you find this object and find yourself uh, all of a sudden when you looked at this object, you knew what you wanted to photograph? Did you have to contemplate it for, for a while? Or was it something, and you already answered, you did not create this broken object to complete your photographic? vision no when i when i saw it, it it spoke to me immediately it was like okay there's there's something broken in me mm -hmm. and um you know when you're when you're uh, even as a dad i know you can you can relate to this when something goes wrong in a kid's life your your first instinct is how can i fix it how can i make it right how can i you know make you know give me the boo-boo let me kiss your boo-boo and make your boo-boo better you know sometimes you can't sometimes it's just broke you know and accepting that and being able to you know you know maybe toss the mirror or you know leave whatever situation is broken and never fixable and just come you know find a piece with it and you know be able to move on with it but i when i saw that i, I was like okay that this this is speaking to me so introspectively i got to look at it and say Okay, I need to capture this because this is saying something that's in me already. So that's how that came about. Okay, All right. Anything okay, else? Mark. Uh, I don't have anything for Greg. Okay. Okay. Thank you for letting me share. I feel like we're back in the photo weenie, back in the dark room. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's funny because the. the the, the idea of these, these talks are to be uh, educational, and so you've taken it to a very, you know, a very introspective place, you know, where you use your photographic vision to explore how you're feeling about things, which is, which is good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. You can, you can put the uh, first photo on the screen. The first photo is me. This was taken during the middle of the pandemic. Uh, maybe, you, I think, our last... Uh, September or October or so, I don't remember exactly, maybe even December. Um, I had to set up classrooms uh, in a room, uh, classroom in my uh, home for the for the kids uh, because they were, uh, both of them were home at the time and they were both uh, learning remotely. And so this was a setup that I, that I created for uh, the, uh, the oldest who goes to a school where the colors are red and gray. And I happened to notice I was wearing gray at the time and when I took this photo, I really kind of just uh, thought about it as I stared into the camera. And, you know, it was a time of uh, great uncertainty. Uh, you know, it was really one of those things where I felt the, the claustrophobic sense. Uh, and this is not, I'm not just making this up. It really, I really did feel this when I took this. A real claustrophobic sense of, you know, the whole world was going through this uh, pandemic. We didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, you know, there were disruptions uh, in every way, and everyone was just sort of trying to make the best of they can. So this is really kind of uh, a good amount of my, you know, trepidation is is really it. And I, I thought it was really interesting because it was on a red backdrop, and. Uh, you know, I, I think it got it gave me a sense of, uh, you know, the uh, the how closed in everyone felt that winter, you know, um, because everyone's so used to being in different spaces. You know, you if you if you live with other people, you you know, you see them at certain intervals in time and you don't really see them 
uh, for a good amount of the day and everyone sort of uh, convenes at the end of the day or you, if someone's away at school, you see them intermittently, but you talk to them. But uh, this all of a sudden, everyone is, is together uh, and everyone was in separate little pods. You know, it wasn't just, you know, my family because I've, you know, I, I've gone on vacation with my family. So it doesn't, it didn't feel the same as this uh, whole sense that everyone everywhere was just trying to take cover from an unknown, unseen, um, deadly uh, affliction that we no, no one knew when we would get it. It's very, very frightening. Um, so this is a lot of portrait, though. Oh, well, thank you. Well, it was, it was, it was a lot of trepidation. And uh, usually when I take self portraits, um, um, you know, they're just really snapshots, but this one, I actually decided I'm going to kind of make a photograph. So I did, mm -hmm. this is the whole, the whole frame, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, that's really it. You can go to the next one. Wait, 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 don't go yet. Yeah. Okay. Go is, well, for me, I get, Oh, oh wow. Smart. Mm -hmm. How you've changed. Oh, um, <laughs> No, that's it. that's the uh, one with you the sexy uh, beast. <laughs> the uh, sorry, the, no, no, sorry. Well, no, the, what I um, wanted to say, the 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 the, the peculiar. I, I know this is other than you guys, but the, that background color. Um, it it reminds me because I've been out here on the west coast for a while. When they have bad. Um, Bad wildfires. Oh, oh, oh. The skies will turn that color. Yeah, and I believe. I've, it. I've always wanted with you know, I've always wanted a picture, like a portrait with 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 that with that uh, freakish apocalyptic uh, reddish reddish brown background. But the other thing too, the um, the thing that the uh, the because of the optics of the glasses is like your face on the right on the um, looking at it left side is smaller in the glasses. So it kind of focuses more attention on the eyes and the eyes are like laser right through you right now. So it's like um, that that optical illusion of, of your uh, face being smaller through the lenses mm -hmm. uh, adds, adds a layer of, um, you know, it adds to um, the, 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 the discomfort that you speak of with um you know through your eyes it's 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 uh <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like a good case for lasik or contact lenses but i understand what you mean no that's that's not what i'm saying do you do you I, see I, on the on the right side or the left side of the image yes i did right. mm -hmm. okay. okay all right <laughs> just these uh the second image uh uh is an image i, I did a couple of years ago and uh, it's not, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a photograph done in daylight. It was a sky blue sky, and you know the format wasn't that. It was a 35 millimeter format that I did crop to uh, a square, but I, I kind of see myself uh, as a person who sort of spanned, you know, a good amount of the 21st century and a good amount of the 20th century at this point. And so this building uh, is one that if you look at old films on, on YouTube, you'll see that it's been there since 1930 something. I mean, it's just a, it's just a, a, a skyscraper in New York city. That's not particularly famous, but it's there. If you're, it's on the, on the Eastern coast of the, uh, of Manhattan and it's taken from the South street seaport and they've renovated it. And you see that those, uh, weird wavy gray uh, shapes that are at the bottom of the frame. Those are uh, mod not, not sort of modular seating, They're modern seating on a, um, on a rooftop uh, on the, on the pier. And it's kind of like the juxtaposition of, of a 20th century building, all this 21st century stuff sort of around it, like that, the building on the right and the building uh, in the, in the seating below. And a lot of times I feel like that's kind of where I am uh, a lot. You know, I'm really steeped in this uh, uh, 
the classical photography. Uh, it's, it, it always is kind of the core of my sensibility. But then there's all of this other stuff about digital and about networking and about uh, computers and how they work and storage and RAM and all the rest of that jazz. It's all around the outside. But um, I think for the three of us who started in film photography and had working careers in film photography uh, just prior to the complete uh, or nearly complete transition to digital, um, it's a very interesting thing to see how much of it's replicated and then how much of it's new. And so I think about all that stuff a lot. And so this kind of represents a lot about how I think about film, that's going to be film photography and the business of photography and the work of photography. And if you go to the third image, um, you know, because I was sort of steeped in this uh, classical art uh, background, you know, from Pratt, a lot of the photography that I do, despite the uh, advances in technology and the advancement in my technical proficiency, there's always at its core a very classic uh, sensibility of portraiture. This was an image that was... Uh, was done for a pageant system for a, a for a, a, a promotional product that they were going to be doing, and uh, uh, what's really nice uh, about it is that uh, although the the idea was for uh, the model to look a lot like a particular starlet from the past, I think in this case it was Ava Gardner. Uh, I still was able to sort of infuse. So that that the, the the old masters, to to borrow a term I really don't like, that that type of uh, uh, lighting and 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 uh, uh, and, and composition, you know, to me it reminds me of the the girl with the pearl earring uh, in, the, in the way uh, it's rendered, rend the way, excuse me, the way the the models rendered. So. It, it really kind of represents a, a, this particular photo represents a great deal of my, uh, my aesthetics uh, and my training uh, and, 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 and the kind of work that, that I tend to do uh, when a pandemic isn't going on. And that's really about it. I like the previous one. Mm -hmm. Um. I know that's one of the great parts about um, shooting in New York because there's a lot of old stuff and a lot of new stuff side by side. And I just love the uh, that, you know, you got the hard angles in the background and even the sky, the negatives, <clears throat> excuse me, the negative space is jagged and angular. But then at the bottom, you know, I don't know if it's eclipsing it or exposing it, but then you've got this wavy black, you know, almost looks like a roll of film. And it, it makes it a little bit on the surreal side, you know, so I can see, you know, the traditional being eclipsed by, you know, something, this, this wave of something, which is, which is very cool. And, well, you know, you know, you know very classic, but go ahead. Well, you know, you know what I like about this is a just as a regular photograph without any uh, imposition of you know who I am on it. One of the things I really think is kind of really cool is the fact that you, know, you always hear the term, "Oh, gee, I couldn't keep the lights on." When people talk about the business, right? And businesses in Manhattan were, are, are inside of these huge buildings, so the lights have to be on in order for someone to actually work in broad daylight. And what I really, really like about this photo is that even though this is uh, sort of mid morning, uh, you can see, or maybe early afternoon, you can see on the left side of that building in the center, just that the big splash of light, right? That, that, that renders all the relief as you go up the tiers. And then on the right side of the building, because there's this big mirrored building next to it, you get the, the splash of light being bounced back into it. But you also get to see the shaded area where really you don't get any light. Mm -hmm. And you get to see inside where the lights that are on the building, that are inside the building, are on also. And I, and I think that really makes the photo for me.
Okay, cool. Mm. So, introspectively, did you feel like you learned something new about yourself? Uh, yeah, I think that in uh, this particular exercise and in, in collecting images for it, I, I, I found that uh, that I have actually pretty much done a little bit better. Uh, photographically than I thought I had. There's, you know, when you when you produce uh, volume work at a in a certain interval in your life, you you know it all starts to look like the same sets of images. But when you start really trying to you know find one image to represent this this big idea, uh, that's when you start finding maybe ten, sometimes as little as uh, five really good images that are representative of what you do. You know, these days they always talk about portfolio shift, 40 images. I remember when we were young, they would say, you know, portfolio should have 13 to towards it, 13, maybe 15 really good images. You know, the, the volume requirement, uh, I think dilutes the, the, the message. And even if someone is varied in their style, I think a lot of times, you don't get a real sense of how they uh, capture something or someone uh, because there are too many samples. And I think people just can't really, you know, you can't really ingest it all. And I, I found that I was having, a, you know, even I have a hard time ingesting all of the material. And uh, I wish I could kind of just do that, you know, 12 to 15 quality images maybe with each, with each genre again. Okay, cool. Oh, very cool. I think your, your three images are quite effective. Quite effective. Thank you. Anything else? Any? No? no? All right, moving right along. Mr. Nelson, you're up. Yeah. Mr. Nelson, who does still currently have work at the Museum of the City of New York? Actually, as of last week, no. The, oh, no. the, show, is, the show is down. So oh, well. the show is done and gone. And has been replaced with something else. But, <laughs> but still, okay. your work is still online. You had a good run. Yeah. yeah, the work is still online at the Museum of the City of New York. Uh, so, congratulations so, again. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, congratulations. Um, photography to me is my reaction to the world around me and how I see it and how I react to it. And so, I'll start off with this particular image, which you know, to me is one of uh, a series of projects that I've been working on. And and I think um, this was one of the few images that I photographed that I actually was doing a test on for printing purposes. And I wanted to see how large a print I can make of this uh, and have it be effective. So uh, in this particular instance, I think I had it uh, enlarged to uh, 20 by 30 inches on a, an aluminum backing. And I, that to me spoke to me about how important the image is to me because I chose it over many other images. And what, uh, you know, this is one of the projects that I'm working on, which has to do with the comfort, the comfort in space and how people congregate in spaces and what they do when they come together and how they react when they come together. And, and I just thought this was kind of an interesting image just because not only is it one of the most claustrophobic uh, places to be if you don't like being in crowded places. But it also says something because when people wear T-shirts that have a message, I think they, they kind of add to the sense of the photograph. And so this person is wearing this yellow T-shirt that says, treat people with kindness. You know, and I just thought that's an interesting juxtaposition because in this particular situation, anyone is treating anyone with kindness because they are all moving to get to the place in which they need to go in a place that is particularly crowded. And so I've always had this dislike of crowded places, but I challenge myself to go into these places to see and get a feeling visually of what it feels like to be in those places, in those spaces, and see what reactions people are. And I like the idea of I get to understand the ways I don't want to be in photographs. Because I see what other people do photo in photographs, and I say, ha, huh, that's the way I don't want to be. And so 
you, it's sort of and it's a weird dynamic too, because if you're a photographer or if you're a, a visual artist, you have to challenge yourself to explore those ideas which you don't like the most. And this is one of those ideas I just don't like. But I've been working on this for so long that I've now gotten used to it. Um, but again, I still don't really like being in crowded places. That's an interesting uh, point of view that you're looking outside to look inside. Yes, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And a lot of people, not to contradict what you're saying, but a lot of people who don't like crowds would, yes. would intentionally shoot landscapes. Yes. Big, empty landscapes. Yeah. You know, big sky, yeah. something. Yeah. But you said, okay, this is my thing. I don't yeah. like this, but I'm going to explore it. Yeah. Uh, very effective too. I, I I really enjoy this this claustrophobic series. I didn't know I didn't know that about you. I didn't know that you uh, you didn't like crowded no. spaces no. and then went into okay. So it's yeah. kind of like your therapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. There's there's more to that emotionally, but I'll I'll only leave it there for now. <laughs> oh come on. Well, I, I have a I have a question, Ken. I mean, it you know you've mentioned before that you're really uncomfortable in these crowded spaces. You know, when you actually have your decide your your decisive moment, are those times when you have a you know, uh, is there is there some consistent level of anxiety, or is there some consistent sense of foreboding or something that it's that, it's you know it really centers on the loss that, of control. I'm sorry, it really centers on the okay. loss of control. Uh, to lose control within this environment is is mind boggling. And I mean, you, I mean, of, of course, I think to some degree, we've all lost control in a public space at some place or another, such as when you're trying to cross a street and you got a zigzag instead of going right. straight, you go, well, that's, that's one of those sensibilities that you, you've just lost control because some now someone else is now dictating your path. And it's that simple, you know, but we, we, we see it as a normal part of life, not as something that you know, it's well, that's just what I got to do to get through the day. But it's like, well, you shouldn't really have to. But we always do it because guess what? That's what society is about. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. so, I mean, are these expressions are these expressions of sort of like a, a sense of panic, not panic, but a, a sense of impending panic or possible panic or mm. or no, it's, it's okay. not meant to exhi ex exhibit panic, just uh, a way of life that people exist in. Uh, for good or for bad. Okay. It is. You know? Oh. Yeah. And, of, of course, you know, uh, aesthetics come into play. So, of course, when you do an edit, you, you think aesthetically what happens and does it work for you. And, yes, it does. So that definitely comes into play. Right. So when you say loss of control, you're not necessarily talking about loss of control from your point of view, but sometimes the loss of control that your subject matter tends to have and you sort of, you know, sometimes you can anticipate that maybe, or sometimes right. you, is yeah. that, is that kind of what you're getting at? So if you see well, two people walking toward one another at a, at an angle, you know, you kind of go, oh, okay, there's going to be an interaction. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you do. But, but, but I would say that six times out of 10, something interrupts it. So it never, it hardly ever goes the way you plan it. Because something in public will always happen. Um, there's this consistent thing that happens to me a lot, and I think it happens to a lot of street photographers. When you see something, you're walking towards something, you say, this is a great image. And then something happens to obscure your view. Something gets in the way. A car drives by. A car parks in a spot. Uh, some people are moving. You know, they block your vision. It always happens. And so, you know, you, 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 you dread it because that's part and parcel of being out there and you have to accept it as such. So you either accept it and, and work around it or you just say, OK, well, that's one for the garbage heap because I never got it. So move on. Next, you know, randomness. Yeah, yeah random the randomness. Happens. Yeah, it is so random. So random. So I'm not, I'm not sure if you answered, but did you did you see the shirt and like stalk her for a while? Or? No, no, no. This is this it was found came in, right the in front of your lens. And yeah, and again, the camera is at about my chest height, so I'm not looking through camera. Um, I'm anticipating what's going on as I see people converge in a spot. 
because this is a street corner. And what happens is the, the walk and don't walk signs are di dictating how people walk. And so when the don't walk sign on is some people are walking from one direction, but not the other. And then it switches to the opposite side. And then sometimes you just have this convergence of people at the corner. And this is what happens when you get this convergence, this dynamic of just chaos, temporary chaos. It only lasts for a few seconds, but man, it's intense when it happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on to this one. Um, okay. You know, and I guess, you know, we, and this alludes to your layers, Greg, which is that there are many layers to us, and we are so uh, so we're so complex. Looks like a razor blade, <laughs> right? And we we there's so many directions to go. There's so many ways to see things. There's so many ways to be, and you don't know which way is up. You don't know which way is down. But you know that you exist, and so you have to figure out what's the best way for you to you know exist in this place and you know you either accept it as it is and just enjoy it or you just turn away and say you know i got other things to do <laughs> is, you know yeah this is too much to figure out right and yeah. so i just think abstractions are so interesting and i just like abstractions. i like yeah. this a lot it's almost like a edgerton is he is that edgerton that does those people walking up and down and Oh, I, I think, it. yeah, in, in video, yeah, I think it does moments. But Greg, it's, Greg, I, I only disagree with you on this idea that it's it's too much to figure out. I mean, isn't that the job? No, no, I'm, saying, I'm just saying. I was I was going I was going along with what Kenny was saying. Yeah. I was for me, I could stay in this image for you know, but I could see somebody saying, "This is too confusing. I don't understand it. I want a simple, yeah. you know." And then they 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 move along because it's too you know too involved. But go yeah. ahead. I'm sorry, Mark. Go ahead. Yeah. No. And it's, you know, when you, it's kind of interesting because you, you visually as a photographer, you're saying, okay, there's dynamics here. And so, and then you got to figure out, okay, how do I convey that dynamics to explore what I'm feeling? And, um, you know, you, you, you look at an image and say, okay, I got to work it to express what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. It's in a sense of confusion uh, in some cases. So it's multi-layered and very much confusing. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I I have to. I hate to do this to you, but I I have to move away from the, the camera for a second. Okay, that's okay. I'll continue what on with the my next one, and you come back. What is the name of that artist that does those um, the people walking up and down? I, I I know Edgerton is not. He's the guy with the uh, slow motion breaking things. Um, it's a multi dimensional. He's always got people walking up one stair and then somebody walking down the same stair from the other side. You remember, was that uh, Duchamp? I mean, was it new, was it some new descending a staircase or something similar to that or something different than that? No, something okay. different than was that. Was it a photograph like a, or, it, or, a, or a painting? No, it's a drawing painting okay. where people are in a space with uh -huh. staircases going up. Staircases I am back. I'm so okay. sorry. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, Greg, I I really couldn't, I can't Mark, figure out who Mark that might is be. The, uh, Mark is the uh, resident guru. Okay. Oh, yeah, and and for the sake of just continuing to move forward, I'll just continue okay, to move sure, forward. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Okay. All right. And so, and I I'll just speak to the last one here, which is, um, again, me reacting to humanity oh, and. And what it does, and 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 how we treat uh, where we live, and you know the kind of perspective we have on our environment, and uh, things that we do uh, because we don't give a crap, you know. And uh, I just think this is emblematic of it. And I just, you know, it's my reaction to um, humanity's uh, inability to appreciate uh, the place we live, and uh, I just, I. I it sucks, <laughs> you know. So yeah. Now, was was this photograph taken before or after the election? This photograph was taken uh, way before the election. This photograph was, I think it's 2018, 2018, 2018. Okay. Yeah. So it's, well, yeah. I, well, I, I asked because they were removing they were removing mailboxes so that people couldn't vote early or vote absentee. 
Yeah. Yeah. Of, yeah. No, this was this was way before, and you know, it's just okay. it just yeah. The, you know, and again, I I always again this is the way I don't want to be, and of course the situation is is pretty dynamic in that people come to be this way for either lack of resources um an inability to you know put their refuse in a, in a proper disposal um but yet this is how they treat uh a place that is unique for the sensibilities and that you want to communicate with other people in other places but this is how it's being treated as garbage so so how that, that well the question I have is how how is this reflective or introspective for you um, in in terms of how does this sort of you know again how, how do you relate, how do you relate to this other than I got a mess okay. I it's it's anti humanity man <laughs> okay if there's if there's something that you know could uh, word it I I, I just it's just some parts of humanity to just just plain ugly, uh, and no matter the circumstances, I don't know if it, it if anyone should ever do this. I'm you know, again, lack of resources makes this the way it is. But uh, in the world's richest country, uh, to do this, something like this and treat this this way is just kind of weird. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, always looking out, uh, looking at how hum humanity treats its place. And realize that man, we are just so bad at loving our space. Um, as a, in general, uh, I'm sure that there are people around who love uh, the planet, but uh, there are other people who don't give two craps about uh, planet Earth. So, and this is just part and parcel. And it's funny because it all it's it's still it's so small and so minute that you would think it doesn't matter, but it does. It does, you know? yeah. So and, and, so, and you know, New York, New York isn't the cleanest. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm done, man. I, I could speak on that, you know, but New I York, won't. New York is isn't exactly the the cleanest city, but certain parts of it are immaculate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. Oh, going back to that that the that abstract that you did. Yeah. It was. It reminded me of um. M. C. Escher. That's the guy. Okay. Where he's got the people in 4D space, you know, walking up and down stairs on the opposite side and such. But this one reminds me of his uh, Sky and Water, where it starts, you know, with fish on the bottom. And as it goes up, they turn into birds. It's really cool. But the idea that, you know, you can let your imagination kind of go wild in this, it's, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy this image. I, I have to agree, but more more than Escher to me, because it's a photograph, just like the architectural sort of uh, photograph that I had, it remind it reminds me of Bernice Abbott because she really explored yeah. that space of the skyscraper as sub art subject, yeah. probably first and more and more extensively than than, than most of us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 kind of, sure. and funny because I think Ajay did it as well. <laughs> Although you consider well, him a street shooter, right, but the fact well, is, he, well, was, he well, was photographing architecture too, not in the way that well, Bernice did it. But but uh, Ajay was trying to photograph uh, Paris, the old Paris before it before it left, mm -hmm. and Bernice Abbott uh, inverted that and decided yeah. to photograph New York as yeah. it was becoming. Yeah. So as New York was becoming this uh, this powerhouse of economy and representative of the of the of the monetary age, for lack of a better way of putting it, not the Gilded Age, but what came after that, the modern age. And uh, that's what she really concentrated on. So the Empire State Building, the Manhattan Bridge, the, you know, uh, you know, uh, seaplane skyports, downtown Manhattan, you know, that yeah, kind of structures. all of that. Yeah. All those structures, monumental uh, shrines to uh, economic and American uh, power and that were really located primarily in Manhattan. That's what she really concentrated on. And so you, you do have a lot of uh, converging, uh, you know, lines, a lot of leading lines going to, you know, these, as these spires reach towards the sky. And then you have a lot of abstracts similar to uh, what we both, you know, the photographs we both did. 
Because same sub similar subject matter. Yeah. Or same mm -hmm. subject. Representation. Did you want to say something, Ken? Or did no. you raise your hand? <laughs> no. Yeah. I accident. Oh. Accident. Uh, yeah, but but it's 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 you know we're all going along with the theme. It's it's uh though it's out there. It's something that's in you that you know makes you uh it you know makes you snap to, snap to shit. Yes. I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. I, I think and I'll I'll just end my sort of presentation by saying that I was bullied when I was younger. And I think the bullying that happened to me when I was younger definitely influenced um, my perspectives on how I see things because I'm always the, I'm always the observer, not really the one being observed to some degree. I try not to be, you always want to be the fly on the wall and uh, watching those who are on in, in the space, using the space. And uh, that continued throughout my adulthood and even up to now where um, I would much rather be the observer than the observed. That's pretty fair. Hmm. So the, the camera was a tool to combat the bullying? Is that what you're saying? I, I won't say that's a direct link, but I could say that one can be a, that could be a sort of a uh, part of a cause and effect thing where it was an effect from, it was a reaction to that. So at some point in time, I could say that uh, psychologically, I don't know because, you know, but if, if, if everything we do in our entire lives is, is brought us up to now, then I cannot discount that as being part of the rationale for the way I photograph. Okay. I mean, that's that's it's a traumatic event, and to um, you know, to to be put yourself back into you know, like you like you're the street photography where you're putting yourself into a an uncomfortable uncomfortable situation. Right. It's it's your way of you know, uh, yeah. You may have bullied me, but you know what? I'm here. You yeah. Know? And and you're able to interject yourself or impose yourself or be able to exist or you know, mm -hmm. just, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, take a stand, you yeah. know, you know, and say this, I'm here. Yeah. You know, I I'm exist. going anywhere yeah. and I'm going to, you know, work through this despite yeah. you. So yeah. I am here. Yeah. You know, so yeah. And it's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's cool. and it's also showed that, you know, um, humans are just that <laughs> they're no, no one is more special than anyone else, man. And so it's kind of interesting that there's this well, I don't know sort of you, but there is this front going on Go where ahead, it is just it's pretty amazing to see how life is about one upping and, you know, and being, you know, up there. It's kind of interesting to see. See, that that is most definitely well, human nature to have something yeah. you know well yeah okay mark you saying no i was gonna say i i understand where you're coming from with a you know it's a it's a it's a it's it's interesting because people talk about you know one up you know you, you said one upping one another you know it, it, it you know the very act of me you know saying anything that is uh contradictory to that you know, it's perceived could be perceived as one upping. I I, I think you're right to some extent. Mm -hmm. uh, I just I just feel that um, uh, I think the economic component is probably one that drives people more towards one upping than than a lot of people would. You know, I, I don't think I don't think it I don't think it's a, a sort of a blanket one upping just for the sake of it. I think some people, you know, are competitive for economic reasons and not always just for uh, egotist egotistical reasons. OK. Mm -hmm. Well, are we there? Yeah. <laughs> OK. Well, this turned out to be an interesting uh, talk that I didn't see coming, but that's a, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, again, we are, this is a photo talk, you know, we talk about photography. We've been doing it uh, for years and years and years and years, and we're continuing it today. My name is Greg Claycorn, and I'm part of the Pretty Black Pratt Gads grads holding this photography talk. And uh, if you find this interesting, or if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for a talk or topic, uh, give us a call. 
or you know, just drop us a note, uh, subscribe to our uh, our video cast, and uh, ring the bell, and uh, so that you know when we post a new one. I'm Greg Claiborne. This is my buddy Ken Nelson and Mark Skinner. Until next time, keep shooting. Mm-hmm.